So, <clears throat> hello everyone, and today we're going to cover drawing mandibular molars. So, uh, as we should always start, let's draw the approximate size for our molars. So, the first molar is always bigger than the second. And this should be visible in your drawings, as I already mentioned in your notes. So approximately like this. Maybe we'll add some changes, but it's better to stick to that first outline you draw. So these are just the indicator lines helping us guide our drawing and helping you as well. So we got this settled down. I'm going to be drawing. Uh, the right quadrant. So, also, if you want to learn how to draw the opposite quadrant, it's easier for you to e take us, uh, for example, pause the video, make a photo, and flip it on your phone. Pretty simple. So, but onto the drawing. So, we do know. Well, let's add some additional lines. We do know that these teeth both taper from the buccal. This is going to be buccal side, on lingual side, mesial and distal, they taper from buccal to lingual. So we can draw some guiding lines that can help us orientate our drawing. Might as well draw them on both sides. So and we also know that they taper from mesial to distal. So we can sort of add these lines as well. But <clears throat> for mandibular first, we more we know that it has the highest point in the middle where our distal cusp is going to be located. So, but we do start on the mesial side. The mesial side is almost straight. The mesial buccal cusp is the largest. We go up, and then we're going to draw our distal cusp as well. Let's go down. Yeah, it's a bit, you see, it crossed our, our initial line. It's a mistake, I was a bit too lazy there. It's going to make our two too wide Should stick with our initial lines. So let's erase the lower one. Is that great? Now we got the outline settled in. The outline should be a thick line, it should be easier to see. And when you bring when we, we are going to draw the supplemental grooves, they should be rather small. So, what now? Now we should add our midline, that always helps, and mid. we should also add where our a mesial buccal and distal buccal grooves are going to be located. Also, we should indicate where our central groove is going to be. But remember that the crowns for mandibular molars are tilted towards the lingual side. So, what this means is it's that our center point is a bit located more toward the lingual side. So, our midpoint approximately is here. But it's low, uh, the central fossa is a bit more towards the lingual, so I'm going to point, make a point here. So then we can start drawing in our main grooves. We can start with the lingual. We can also and don't draw. I prefer not draw them completely straight. If you draw them straight, it's not a big mistake. It just looks a bit more natural if it's it has a bit of a twist in it. So. Uh, then we can add our mesial buccal groove and our distal buccal groove. So we got these now. So now let's add our central groove. It goes all the way across, sort of a, a zigzag shape, as written in your lecture, if I'm not mistaken. Let's start our groove here.
the central groove ends with a sort of a Y shape like like this. Uh, don't draw this ending for lingual or mis any of the buckle grooves. That would be con considered a mistake, actually. So again, our central grooves are distinctly visible. They are dark, easier to spot, easy to understand, even if you haven't not written anything in. So you should make the and the pits a bit more distinct so I can see them a bit better so it's going to be our central so um, now our indications for cusps And when we draw this, we can also draw indication for triangular ridges like this. So, some of you, uh, when naming the cusps, uh, draw, for example, draw a mesobuccal line here and write that the cusp is located here. It's not located there. It, it's uh, the cusp can be located on the same line as the groove is located on. So, um, and there is going to be also a different. So, moving forward, and uh, now we can add our, uh, oh, we forgot our lingual cusps. So, due to the crown tilt, you see less of the lingual surface. So, this distance is going to be shorter than this one. This is a bit larger, wider area than compared to this. So, this is our main drawing, for, in essence. What else we can add? we can add supplemental grooves. There are each, there, you can draw two on the, uh, on the opposite side of any of the main grooves. So it's, it looks like this. Two rather small here, one here. Like this, but they are small. You see, they are not as wide as our main grooves and this should be easier to understand. It, can, it, it helps me both to understand the drawing and also helps you to not get lost in all the lines. So this is our uh, mandibular first molar. And now let's draw the second molar. So the second is a bit simpler actually. This is mo one of the most difficult ones. So our molar has quite a distinct mesiobuccal cusp. The whole crown tail uh, tapers towards the distal. It, the tooth has sort of a, you can almost say, a rectangular shape. The mesial side, again, a bit more, bit more straight. A bit more square shaped, actually. But in essence, it's not an interesting shape. You can see our taper, okay, maybe taper it a bit more. So when I do these corrections, it's uh, actually pretty good if you would delete these lines. So it's understandable, and the, and the drawing looks a bit more tidy. So, again, our central line, but now we only have one vocal group, so it's a bit easier. The same as uh, for the first mandibular molar, to the crown tilt, it's located lower than the, uh, the, the central pit is going to be located lower than the actual midpoint of the tooth approximately here and we can start with our central grooves again and then I think maybe we can oh, the shape is rather correct uh, so now uh, draw the lingual groove again we can draw the, our buckle groove as well and the central groove
So, and let's make our lines a bit more distinct, a bit more visible, easier to understand for you and for me. So, these are our vein. Now let's indicate the cu our cusps and our central ridges. This groove could be located a bit more to the side as this cusp is a bit more distinct. You see this area is a bit too wide, which we should actually do this correction. But I'm the one who is actually drawing this tutorial. kind of wrong of me to ask you to draw it correctly and make mistakes on my own drawings. So, a bit better. So, and we can add our supplemental grooves as well now. The rather small ones. So like this, we can indicate our marginal ridges as well, the tiny lines here that are separated from the main ones, like this. And that's basically it, I think. Uh, maybe we can lower this corner a bit, Look, kind of looks a bit too, too asymmetrical. This tooth is rather symmetrical in essence, anyway. So, and a quick note uh, how to draw the structures in better. So you, a lot of you guys are struggling with this. I suggest still using a pencil, maybe different colors. Some of you were using different color pencils. That's actually a pretty good idea. Um, what we can do today, however, I think well, we can use a white pencil, for example. But I highly recommend you, uh, for example, and pit. Oh, this, this is not going to work. Change of plans. Okay. So I suggest you circle the fossa and the structures you draw with a, either a straight piece of paper or a ruler. Imagine this is a ruler. You straight lines. It's a cusp. A triangle ridge. Right on the side, so I can draw in my linear groove as well. And draw as many structures as you can on one side. Uh, basically, and now on the other side, you basically have a bit less. Well, you need still need to point in the central groove. So, on the, our buckle side, we need names of our cusp, the name of the triangular ridge, our buckle groove, again triangular ridge, again cusp. And uh, some of and how to draw in the transverse ridge. So uh, my personal suggestion, an example would be you can draw it in like this. And draw it, for example, to the side. So maybe also we can add it here somewhere. I understand that this is a lot of lines, and it's sort of easy to mix them up. So I, I personally draw them all in before I start numbering them. So I think I have all the lines in here. Uh, well, we could add a crest of curvature as well, maybe a 
it's added here. And uh, I think in essence we have them all. Uh, oh, I do for have seen forgotten to add in the central groove. So let's add them in this line. I think now we have them all. So what do we do now when we have all the structures? We number them, we go in a circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Well, you do know how to count. So when we finish, then we can make a list either on the same page if you have space or you can send in an additional page with uh, with the full list. Optimally, however, I prefer if you can squeeze it somewhere in, in, in the page but still make the drawings big. I mean, in essence, you should uh, make the drawings big because it's uh, easier to easier actually to draw and easier for you to understand your mistakes and, uh, and the correct shape in essence. Uh, that the thing you saw in the middle of the drawing, this uh, is an actual human skull. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of molar structures left. I might use it for to showcase the uh, upper uh, molars, but I'm not completely sure how well the camera focuses. And I think we'll try at least to make a separate video for that as well. With this, I would like to say thank you, and I'll see you on the next video.